1923 is just one of the prequels to the mega hit TV series Yellowstone. And together, they focus new attention on the rugged American West. For decades, people from all over the country have journeyed there for rest and relaxation and a taste of another way of life. And one place they've stayed and continue to stay is Dornan's, a secluded and welcoming spot inside Grand Teton National Park that's even older than the park itself. We had a very late winter, and this is unusual. We first Last caught up with Huntley Dornan in mid-April, when spring hadn't quite sprung yet. I just found a photo that I took last year at this time of some wildflowers that were already starting to come up. We still had snow on the ground, but we had flowers too. It was, it was a much nicer spring. At his family-owned and operated resort, nestled in the foothills of Grand Teton National Park. We are in a valley that was carved by glaciers and then sort of buffed by the Snake River. So we have this broad, very flat valley and then we have these, these mountains that, are, that stand they just, just 6,500 feet from the valley floor and they go straight up, straight out up. of nowhere, right? And then you add to that that we're in the greater Yellowstone, I guess you could argue the largest intact ecosystem in the lower 48. So we have all this wildlife, we have grizzly bears, we have bison, we have moose, we have elk, we have all these, these things that you really can't see anywhere else in the world. These particular cabins are only about 30 years old. Okay. Huntley is CEO here, of Moose Enterprises, you know. <laughs> which operates one of the oldest running hotels in the region. What did this place look like 50, 100 years ago? 100 years ago, there was nothing here. Nothing. There, was a, there was a cabin right down here by the river that was the original homestead cabin, and there would have been a couple of little outbuildings, and that would have been it. I want to show you, Michelle, the history of the Dornan family. Huntley's uncle David is the family historian and says it all began with a Philadelphia divorcee named Evelyn Dornan. My grandmother came here as a dude. We always called our Eastern visitors dudes. She won a homestead and set up a working dude ranch. We had initially a guest ranch with horses and pack trips and people who stayed several weeks here. Her 17-year-old son, Jack, David's dad, was in tow. This was not a winter resort then. Those first 50 years were tough. And with six siblings in the family? We all had to do chores and work in summer from a very young age. Dornan's predates Grand Teton's National Park designation, which was established in 1929. As the story goes, the family refused to sell to John D. Rockefeller Jr. while he was acquiring thousands of acres for conservation. He gave his holdings to the federal government, and by 1950, a grander park was born. By then, David's younger brother, Rodney, had entered the family business. Huntley's father was responsible for getting the cabins and the design and appointments at the cabins. It was all his work. By the 1970s, the valley landscape drastically changed with the influx of big ski resorts. Real estate prices soared, making this county one of the richest in the nation. That presented a unique set of challenges. Folks who service this area have to live sometimes in another state because they can't afford to live here. Yeah. Is that a, a difficulty for you to bear? It's honestly, I would say it is bordering on a crisis for our community, really. Your number today is we house all of our seasonal staff, as do a lot of other businesses in the county. The people that are getting squeezed out of this community are the people in the middle, right? So it's really hard for us to find, you know, managers, year-round staff, people who want to have families, people who want to settle down somewhere. What do you do? Everything. Folks it, it, like it, Tim Mowry, he's worked here half his life. What is it like to work for a space like this? It, it's incredible. I mean, it's cliche, but it really is family. What keeps the staff of 100 hopping isn't room service, there are only 12 log cabins built to accommodate some 30 guests. During high season, the action is at Dornan's main lodge. 
when hundreds of day trippers descend on the property to take in the scenery and a bite to eat and drink at the Chuck Wagon restaurant or the pizza and pasta company. Yeah, we've been doing this for 70 years or so. And the resort's wine shop like is also a big draw. Who comes here? Everybody comes here, <laughs> for better or worse, you know. We want to give people a great service experience, and we want to provide a great value. Value can happen at any point on the price spectrum, right? You can have a great sandwich for 12 bucks, you can buy a $70 bottle of wine, and it's a great value, right? And this property is no stranger to fame. It's been the backdrop of movie locations since Hollywood's golden age, with films like Shane and Spencer's Mountain. Huntley's Uncle David was an eager teen back oh then. Oh, my. Like, who did you meet that was a big deal for you? Who, who I remember quite well was Henry Fonda. It's that legacy that keeps the Dornans, as a rough and tumble family, motivated. That and some pretty clever estate planning. You know, my grandfather, when he gave this business to his kids, was that it made it virtually impossible for any one part of the family to take control and virtually impossible for it to get sold to anybody on the outside. That's amazing. Okay, I appreciate it. But for a guy who lived Thanks. elsewhere for 20 years, expanding his resume with management roles at Patagonia and Quicksilver, the call of the Wild Tetons was just too hard to resist. What brought you back? You know, I grew up here. I love this place. The reason that I came back is that this place has sort of always been my North Star, right? You picked the whole plant. <laughs> I have no doubts about this being the place I want to raise my son. I have no doubts about the value of the contribution I'm making. Keeping this place going another 100 years is a worthy thing for me to do with, you know, if I can set this place up to succeed for another 100 years, I will feel like I have lived a life that had great value to me. And it's a true family business. And, and they seem to really um, lean into the fact whoever is best to take over or to lean into whatever project is going on or is needed, they rely on them. They point it in that direction. And, you know, I, I really love the approach of how they are dealing with what they call a crisis in that region. Huntley's talking about making sure that people are well paid, uh, making sure that they are uh, understand the options of work there, and really trying to get people, you know, in that middle range to keep them in there and to and to employ them. It's 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 an important it's an important you know, uh, goal he has. And pretty to look at, too. Oh, oh it's, gorgeous. I, mean, it's I, yeah. big. I yeah. love how he described it as his North Star, too. That's great. Yeah. Not, that much like, not much like Grand Teton.